Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at the VLOOKUP function in Excel. Now the way that works, let's say I've got a variety of products here that I'm selling in my tool company. Each product has an ID. So you can see up here the product ID, the description of the product, and its unit price. Now let's say I'm putting together an order that I want to fill with the details for each of these items. Here I've got four lines set up with the items that I want to purchase and you can see all four of them are associated with order number 1001. Alright, so I take a look at the first item X-45500. If I look back at the items I can see that that's my number one Phillips screwdriver. And that's the unit price I'm going to sell to the retailers. Okay, well instead of having to type that in, since I've got my data arranged already nicely, let's go ahead and use an Excel function to do that. And the function we're going to use is called VLOOKUP. Now Excel's pretty handy if I start typing in a formula and then start typing in the function that I want to use VLOOKUP Excel recognizes that I want to use a function and now it will give me some tips as to how to use this function so what's the value where is the table that I'm going to pull the results I want which column is that table is the uh, uh, value that I want in and whether I want an exact range lookup or not. To get a little bit more detail I can press this function button here in my formula bar and you can see here that Excel pops up the helpful um, dialog here allowing you to uh, get even more help on each of the arguments in your function. So for lookup value, which was the first variable in my function, I want my item number. So that is the field directly to the left of my function. Now the table is going to be the items that I'm working with over here on the other, other uh, spreadsheet. So I'll highlight the entire table which I happen to have named item master so that makes things handy now I'm going to go to the column index number I want the description which is in column number one two so that's the second column of my table so I'm going to use column number two and then the range lookup um, allows me to get a, an approximate match if I put in true or if I leave it uh, set it as false it needs an exact match so we're going to go ahead and put in false and you can see here that Excel even helps you out and tells you well based on what you have put in here's what I'm going to give you so number one Phillips screwdriver that does have happen to be indeed what we're looking for so we click OK and now we have our formula that works out great now to uh, copy this formula down I'm just going to drag it and you can see that I'll get my number three Phillips screwdriver for 45590 yep Allen wrench set 52220 and 79770 is our one inch wood chisel. Alright, now I can also get my price here. So I can do the same thing here. Um, now you'll notice here I've used B2. The easiest way to fix that in place is to use an absolute reference. So if I press the F4 key, 
you can see dollar signs go in front of the B and the 2. That means I'm always going to look up uh, B2 as opposed to just the cell to the left. If I were to copy this formula over to my unit price, then I get a nonsensical answer or an NA because it's trying to look in D3, see here, D3 for the key uh, for the value that it's looking up. So unit price is going to give us nothing there. So now, since I've set this as an absolute reference, I'm always looking at B2, not just the cell to the left. I can uh, copy and then paste. And now you see I still get number one Phillips screwdriver. Uh, what I want here is the price, which in our items table happens to be in our third column. So we change our column number to three and now we've got our unit price. And since we've got B2, we can go down to copy that down one and see what we get. Ah, okay, we got 0.9 again. Now what happened was it's still looking at B2. So how do we fix this? Well, the best thing to do is go back up to the first line and see we've got an absolute reference both to the column and to the row which is great because we do want column B but not so great from the row standpoint because we want the row to float as we move up and down in our unit price column so uh, I can delete the dollar sign manually or by pressing the F4 key I can rotate through the various absolute uh, reference options. I can make my reference absolute by column, by row, or by both, or leave both to float as relative references. So here you can see as we go through them it uh, changes up the dollar signs for you automatically. Here we'll go ahead and leave it on column B and then now if we copy down to the next row you can see we get the appropriate price, $1.20, for our number three Phillips screwdriver. So now with a little more confidence we can drag down to the uh, remaining two items and see our uh, unit price. So let's go ahead and set up our order for these various items. I'm going to order, oh let's say, 75 Phillips screwdrivers, number one. 125 number three Phillips screwdrivers, uh, 200 Allen wrench sets, and um, let's say 50 one inch wood chisels. So now I already had the uh, formula set up in my extended price so the formula gets uh, put in there automatically. I've got my total and uh, now we've gotten a chance to see how VLOOKUP and also the um, uh, absolute and relative references in Excel formulas work.